Hello everyone, welcome to UK Gaming Network. I'm Zoidberg, here to guide you through our choices for the best games from June 2018. With both the World Cup and Wimbledon looming large in the real world, it's been a month full of sport in gaming too. And with the soaring temperatures outside, we've found plenty of new releases to play, allowing us to sit next to large fans where it's cool. As usual, we only include brand new, complete games in our list, so don't expect to see Flashback or Ikaruga here, even though they are two of the greatest games of all time or Realm Royale, as that's in early access. Also, having not managed to play the latest Jurassic World or Warhammer games yet, we can't include those either, even though they both look brilliant. Keep watching to find out which games we played and liked the most, and remember to tell us your choices in the comments. We're not going to lie, we worried that Codemasters had lost their way after last year's misjudged Micro Machines reboot, and when it was announced that Onrush was a similarly online focused arcade racer we feared the worst. Thankfully it marks a return to form, although one that ultimately falls just short of brilliance. The problem is, despite being a very enjoyable and balanced game, it never shakes off the feeling that something is missing. It's like the multiplayer portion of a bigger game, but the developers forgot to include the rest of it on the disc. It's like releasing battle mode for Mario Kart without the main game to support it. So although the vehicles are fun to drive and the tracks look fantastic, we spent 90% of our time wishing that we could just take part in regular 3 lap races instead. If that gets added in a future update, it will be well worth buying. With all the attention that Life is Strange brought them, it's easy to forget that French developer Don't Nod also created the ironically named Remember Me for Capcom back in 2013. Like that game, Vampire is an action adventure with a terrific story that falters in the most important area, the action. Although the fighting here initially feels decent, the further you progress into the game, the more you come to realise that the combat system isn't deep or involving enough to sustain your interest, and it makes boss fights more of a frustrating chore. It's a shame because this is a game that gets everything else spot on. It absolutely nails the atmosphere of Victorian era London and populates it with interesting characters and multiple side quests to complete. And with the moral choices of how you play, there's a very strong chance you'll want to play through it at least twice. Get served! If we were giving an award each month for the game with the best theme music, then Sushi Striker would win it hands down. Every time we loaded the game, we simply had to let the intro play in full, and it always resulted in a beaming smile, which, as luck would have it, sets you up perfectly for the bonkers puzzle battle game that follows. The story is possibly one of the silliest we've ever seen in a game, and you're better off just going with it than concentrating on the excellent gameplay. Learning the basics of matching the coloured plates of sushi and flinging the empty dishes at your opponent takes seconds, and it works far better using the touchscreen controls. Each level is fast and furious, and learning when to use your power-ups and attacks soon becomes key to every victory. There's a surprising amount of depth to it, but ultimately it's probably not worth the £40 asking price. Simultaneously revealed and released in the middle of EA's press conference, the existence of Unravel 2 was one of the genuine surprises from this year's E3, and an incredibly welcome one at that. For the further adventures of Yarny, developers Coldwood have given him a buddy to whom he remains tethered for the duration of the game. This makes for some excellent co-op platforming for two players, but surprisingly it works really well when played on your own too. Well thought out mechanics allow you to switch between characters at any time, and even combine them together so that it never becomes tiresome. Puzzle sections are never too difficult to overcome, and they're always fun to solve, which is a good job too, as aside from the main quest, this sequel now includes even more puzzles in the shape of challenge rooms, which further test your lateral thinking once the main game is over. The Crew was a bold and ambitious open world driving game that never quite lived up to its full potential. The Crew 2 sets about trying to rectify this by improving almost everything in the game and then adding even more vehicle types to get to grips with. We've barely scratched the surface of what this game has to offer 
as it was released with just two days to go before the end of the month, but there's already much to like and admire about this sequel. We like the fact that fast travel is now available from the start, allowing you to take part in events all over the sprawling map from a menu. This makes the early stages far more enjoyable. Of course, it's still possible to road trip from coast to coast if you wish, but to get the most enjoyment out of that, you'll need to bring along some friends and a really fast car. It's disappointing that PvP won't launch until the end of the year, but the game is off to a really good start. Mario is like that one kid at every school who, no matter what sport you were playing, was always brilliant at it. Golf, baseball, football, athletics, he's tried them all and succeeded every time. But for us, tennis remains his best sporting endeavour. Mario Tennis Aces might just be the best entry in the series yet and feels like a direct response to the negative reception that Ultra Smash received. Where that game was lambasted for its lack of content, this one comes overloaded with it. It's the first entry to feature a full-blown adventure mode for nearly 15 years, and it rivals Sushi Striker for the silliest story of the month. It offers up numerous challenges that perfectly teach you how to get the best out of the different shot types available, and it does so without ever feeling like a tutorial. Online options are the only disappointment so far, but if Nintendo show the same commitment to new content that they have with Splatoon and ARMS, we can see this being a game that we'll be playing for months to come. So there you have it, UK Gaming Network's favourite games of June 2018. We hope you enjoyed it and didn't disagree too much. With half the year gone already, we'll be back next month to see if you like and keep up the high standard. In the meantime, give us a like and subscribe for more videos just like this one, and be sure to keep an eye on our Facebook and Twitter pages for announcements about upcoming live streams. Thanks for watching.